you don't have a copy of you singing I Lost My Heart to John Foster Dulles. Oh. So I was wondering if you could honor us with a few lines now, if you remember it. Wow, I just remember the refrain, which went, I made a fool of myself over John Foster Dulles. I made an ass of myself over John Foster Dulles. The first time I saw him, twas at the UN. I never had been one to swoon over men, but I swooned and the drums started pounding and then I made a fool of myself over John Foster Dulles. That's all I know. Right. <laughs> now for those was, of you who don't hmm. remember, John Foster Dulles was then, in 1957, the Secretary of State and the reputation he had was anything but being made a fool over. He was kind of a square and he wore a hat and uh, the, some of the media went so far as to call him a pickle puss. And so yes. uh, the idea of the song was that I was this young girl uh, swooning over him the way most other kids were swooning at the time over Elvis Presley. So that's ah, why that no, I'm was glad a you explained that for special us material people, I... comedy song. Your mother could have told I would, you I wouldn't have that. Your, by the way, your, your high note cracked a plastic glass here. I just want to <laughs> yes, well, I'm thinking that. of doing a Memorex commercial. But, <laughs> if it was on the Sullivan Show, it exists because they yes. have every show. Card it was catalog. on the Sullivan Show. Okay. Yeah. I guess why I thought of your career being enshrined is we're sitting here in this in the Museum of Broadcasting, which is one of the great resources of New York, by the way, that I never take advantage of because I live here. You know that thing where you live mm -hmm, next door to the mm -hmm. museum, you never go to it. And uh, so a lot of your work is here, and people can come in and look at it. Can you look back at your old stuff without pain of any kind? No. <laughs> I, I mean, some of it, I, uh, I, oh, if, for instance, we're in, in uh, syndication now. Yeah. The half-hour version of uh, the old Carol Burnett show is now in syndication and has been for a while. It's called Carol Burnett and Friends. And I don't always know when it's on because it is syndication and sometimes I'll turn turn it on and it sounds familiar and I look and I see that it's Harvey and me and Tim looking a lot younger. Yeah. And there are times when I don't quite recall some of the sketches and usually it's because they weren't very good. But suppose you could look into the crystal ball and realize that there were seven more years before that would have happened. Do you ever think, eh, maybe another year? Once in a while, especially when I see things on television or in the news that, whatever, that I would kind of like to do a takeoff on. You that know. itch to, oh, I wish I could do a sketch Ooh, on I that. I would like to do a sketch on Dynasty or, you know, yeah. and play Linda Evans or Joan Collins or John, John Forsyth or all yeah. of them, you know. Uh, Imelda Marcos, naturally. I would mm -hmm. have loved to have done something on that you when that happened. call it there's no business like shoe like business. Like shoe business. Yeah. <laughs> you saw that coming, didn't you? Yes, I yeah, did. Right, I did right. that. You know, I mean, there are various things that happen that once in a while I think, oh, God, would, would Harvey be funny as Robin Leach? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a life! You know, I mean, you know, Harvey would just do that to a fairly well, <laughs> yeah. you know. So once in a while, I would love to see that. You doing Harvey doing it isn't so bad either. <laughs> when you had trouble in your adult life, and everybody knew you got divorced and so uh -huh. on, did you ever have that feeling of, didn't I pay enough as a kid? Now in my, now in adulthood, I have to have problems too. You know, that sense of... I've paid enough, I've paid my dues. So where does it say, here's, here's the bag where you pay your dues and here's the happy bag? I mean, you oh, know, you, <laughs> yeah. you just, also, <clears throat> Joe and I were married uh, almost 20 years and we had a very productive marriage and we had three terrific kids and uh, you know, when somebody might think, oh, well, that was a flop or isn't that sad something failed? Yeah. I don't think 20 years is a failure. We it's went on our parallel lines. That's what happened. That's a different chapter. He's a different person now. I'm a different person. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't regret one minute or one year of yeah. what we spent together. Your daughter said something wonderful, I thought, uh, I think to an interviewer. I don't even know if you read it, but she said, uh, my mother rebelled in one way. Her parents were, she didn't use the word flaky, but some word I think you use in the family. And so she became straight, so to speak, as a kid in a way. She almost like setting an example for them of what you wanted them to be. And since you were a 
mother who tried to be rather traditional, maybe because your parents were not. Mm -hmm. uh, she said, so I went the other way. Mm -hmm. and I it became skips a generation. Yeah, it goes, every other one has to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like the, the conservative kids now of the drug generation uh -huh, exactly. are showing their parents what they ought to have been. Well, Carrie's doing a super thing now. A, she uh, has five years of sobriety. Mm -hmm. And uh, B, she's on. Uh, she's a regular performer now on Fame, yeah. and uh, doing beautifully. And C, which I'm really happy for her and proud that she did it and wants to do it. They asked the Fame kids um, last June to go to uh, around the Boston area, the Heart and Lung Association, to talk to get this fourth and fifth graders about pot and about yeah. dope and stuff. Now Carrie. Uh, because of her role on fame, and she's looking very punked out. She looks like a walking video. She's got the hair, she's doing the whole thing. She came over the other night when I left California, she came over to say goodbye. She looked like an Easter egg. She, that was, this was her own description. It's lavender, uh -huh. lavender hair. And I kind of looked at it, and then I thought, wait a minute, Carol. I'm having the reaction that maybe a mother 60 years ago had when their daughter came in as a flapper mm -hmm. and, and with the short showed. thing and then the rouge knees and uh, yeah. the short cropped clarabo hair and the flat chest where they bound everything and the little, you know, that I, I kind of look like I have my own baby share. You know, in a way. <laughs> and, birth, uh, yeah, yeah. And she's and she's doing this whole thing, and yet she went to these schools and she went to these high schools, and and all the kids say, God, she's hot, she's terrific, and she's up there with not one chemical. She doesn't even drink. Yeah. And she's saying, Hey, look at me. I'm having fun, and I'm in here, and I'm aware of the fun I'm having. Mm -hmm. And it's so much better not to be high. And the kids love it because it's like going to a dentist, a little kid. You, you don't want to hear from the dentist about wearing braces. You want to talk to another kid who had braces on that's right. and to see what that's like. So her the peers, the kids are really identifying with her now. And I think she's doing an awful lot of good, and it's her choice. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very happy that she wants to do that. And she's, I think she's going to help people. Carol, I'm uh, in danger now making one of those fulsome remarks, and, and I can feel myself wanting to lacrimate because of my great affection for you. So You've been reading Reader's let's, let's Digest, let's Improve Your Vocabulary again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, I, I can't say what I mean, what you mean to me on the air, so afterwards I'll try to do it. All right, we'll do lunch. You want to? <laughs> <laughs> I shall see you again maybe someday. We could do this. I hope so. Thing. I want to come back to New York and, and play. So let's do have dinner or something, huh? Let's frolic. Yes. Miss, as they say, Carol Burnett, ladies and gentlemen.